السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them To bless every one of us and to grant us every form of goodness My beloved brothers, sisters, dearest listeners Indeed, we are blessed by the fact that we have been sent the best of creation as the messenger to us, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final prophet, the greatest and the highest in rank. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this great blessing and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can follow the path of this great messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you look at the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they were chosen by Allah as well. And if you look at the qualities that they found in the Messenger, peace be upon him, you would come to realize that these are some of the greatest qualities ever to exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The Creator is praising the qualities, the character and conduct of the messenger, peace be upon him, by saying, you are upon a very great level of character and conduct. The Mufassirin have explained here that it is referring to the highest level of character and conduct. Now, if you take a look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and that's what we're going to do tonight, we want to look at what made him so loved by those who looked at him with the eye of sincerity. Why do I say the eye of sincerity? Because there were people who looked at him with the eye of envy, with the eye of jealousy, with the eye of hatred. They never saw the goodness in him. Although they were in his presence, they were fortunate to see him, but unfortunate that they had the wrong heart. Look at Abu Jahl, look at Abu Lahab. Look at Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik, look at so many others. Look at Umayyah ibn Khalaf. And the list goes on. They were even related to him, but they didn't understand his value because they looked at him with the wrong eye. Lesson number one. When you look at someone with an eye of genuineness, you will see in them their true character. You will benefit from them. You will appreciate the goodness they have. You will be able to elevate yourself and perhaps help them also identify, not in the case of the messenger, but in the case of someone else, their weakness. Because they will understand you are genuine towards them. Ask yourself a question. If someone came to you to correct you, would you correct yourself? I can tell you the answer. If that person is genuine, they came to you in a respectful way and they really have proven that they've cared for you in the past and they came to you in a lovely way that was not embarrassing, you would automatically feel honored that you were corrected. But when someone wants to make a fool of you, wants to embarrass you, wants to openly degrade you, that is no way of correcting. So number one, the Prophet peace be upon him's character was of such a level but it took an eye of goodness and genuineness. May Allah grant us the eye of genuineness and the heart filled with sincerity so that we can recognize good from bad, so that we can recognize those who are genuine. So the Prophet ﷺ from the very beginning, he was granted a certain type of an upbringing. Allah chose for him that he wouldn't have a father after he was born or just prior to his birth, his father had passed away. Abdullah. Ibn Abdul Muttalib, he passed away. A little while later, the mother passed away, so he was an orphan. Subhanallah, good news to those who are orphans, although it's a very, very big challenge. It does not mean if you're orphaned that Allah dislikes you. It doesn't mean that. Perhaps Allah loves you because the one he loved the most, he gave him this challenge. He was looked after by the uncle, or in fact, the grandfather initially for a little while, and the grandfather also passed away, and thereafter the uncle. So that was the upbringing. But from the early stages, he was known as a very, very upright child. Subhanallah. I know it's a little bit too late to talk to most of us now, because we're adults. 
But it's not too late to reform. It's not too late to look back and to correct ourselves and perhaps encourage the little ones. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never uttered a lie, even as a child. Subhanallah. Never uttered a lie. So he was already loved. Subhanallah. Never uttered a lie. He was honest. He had the sense of honesty from childhood. Subhanallah. He was transparent. The children, subhanallah, as they played with him, he had friends as he grew up. And you know what? Those were, some of them were the ones who actually stood by him because they knew him the most. Look at Abu Bakr as Siddiq. His name is Abdullah ibn Uthman, also known as Ibn Abi Quhafa. He was a friend of the Prophet, peace be upon him, from the young days. And as they grew older, when he declared the prophethood one day, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu immediately knew, this man's not a liar. He has never lied to us prior to this about worldly matters. Why would he lie about heavenly matters? Why would he lie about Allah? So immediately he says, I bear witness, no doubt. Subhanallah, he didn't even, you know, they say not a blink of an eye. Subhanallah. So the character of the Prophet ﷺ, he was, he always had a pleasant expression on his face. May Allah grant that to us. That's amazing. A pleasant expression. Sometimes look in the mirror and see your expression. You will be surprised. To correct it slightly, to modify it a little bit, would do you a lot of good. Amazing. Sometimes we have an expression as though we are about to injure someone. Astaghfirullah. I'm wording it lightly. Sometimes we have an expression as though, you know, we are so angry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the speaker as well as all of us. May Allah make us more conscious of it. And for this reason, later on, the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us that to smile is a charity. Smile. Keep on smiling. I can be in perpetual charity. Amazing. Every time I see someone, you smile at them, you look at them, you have an expression that you become conscious of. And it makes people feel like they're not depressed anymore, even if they were slightly depressed prior to you having passed or to having seen you. It makes them feel good. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. But this was on another level. Obviously, we're trying to derive lessons. So they, they loved him. They loved being in his company. They loved his companionship. Even prior to prophethood, he had a circle of friends. They were all upright, honest. Look at Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. At the time, alcohol was something prevalent. Everyone drank and they made money through it. The Prophet sallallahu never ever tasted it, never dealt in it. Never had anything to do with it from before Islam, from meaning prior to prophethood. The same applies to his best friend. Who was he? Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Two years younger than him, but they were very close. He too never tasted, never drank, never dealt in, and so on. It goes to show that the friends you have speak volumes about who you are. If anything, the friends you have actually interpret and give a, a picture of the true you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us because if you were, if you were with someone every day of your life and they happened to be people who are far from your thinking your way your habit you will have very little to do with them as time passes because you will become irritated even if you were married to someone and they ended up being a person who was not to your liking, perhaps it would end up in a divorce. It has happened. But if you are getting along with someone laughing and joking every day, spending hours on end, it shows who you are and who they are. They say birds of a feather flock together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I remember saying this to some youngsters and they said, listen, don't think you're smart. We're neither birds nor do we have feathers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But the point being raised here is, look at your friends, look at the circle you have. When the Prophet ﷺ mixed, he mixed from a young age with those who were of a high level of character as well. They were beautiful people. Look at Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He was looked after by the Prophet ﷺ as he grew up because of some circumstances that came across or, or that were, that his father had gone through. The father of Ali, Abu Talib, subhanallah. So the Prophet ﷺ decided to look after him for a while. When the 
Nubuwa or prophethood came, do you know what happened? The, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was the first of his generation to say, yes, I believe. No questions asked. No questions. Why? Because they knew him. I want to ask myself a question. And everyone should ask themselves this question. Your best buddies, your best friends, if you were to tell them something big, would they believe you? Would they believe you without asking a question? I think we all have some improvement to do there, inshallah. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Even the petty, the petty statements we make sometimes are big in the eyes of Allah. تَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنًا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ Sometimes a person thinks when they just accuse someone or they make a statement, oh, you know, this person is like this, like that. Allah says, you think it's light in the eyes of Allah. It's huge. It's massive. May Allah help us. Then the Prophet ﷺ, when he was a little bit older, he became known as a sadiq al-Amin. Now he was working, meaning he did business for a woman who was much older than him. And she was a wealthy woman. He went up to Asham, to the Syrian peninsula. He came back. And subhanAllah, he was known as the truthful, the honest. When Quraysh had a problem with the Hajj of Aswad, when they were rebuilding the Kaaba, they decided to call on a young man. It was prior to Nubuwa. They said, bring Muhammad, peace be upon him. He is the most just from amongst us. So the sense of justice was such that it was amazing. Look at the Prophet ﷺ, his own relatives later on. He said, if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, and he, anyone who's right is right, even if they're not related to me. And who is wrong is wrong, even if they're related to me. He says, Wallahi law anna Fatima ta binta Muhammadin saratat laqata'atu yadaha. He says, when Fatima bint al Mahzumiya, who comes from a very high clan, the, the same clan as Khalid ibn al Walid ibn al Mughira, <coughs> radiallahu an. Uh, she had stolen something, this woman. And the Prophet ﷺ was told, you know, she comes from a very high family, very wealthy, you know, very noble or very, you know, uh, lofty, etc. He says, hey, 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 relax. Do you think this is, this is connected to Allah and His limits? Do you want to make me compromise something when it comes to the limits of Allah? What's just is just. What's fair is fair, be it you or my own daughter. If my daughter did this, I would punish her in the same way. Subhanallah. He didn't mind what people thought of him for as long as he was on the right path. But he was always humble. When he got prophethood, he became even more humble. With us, imagine if you were told you are the best of creation, the most noble of all, prophets. Subhanallah, it's not going to happen to us. But just imagine for a moment, if you were told you are the best. Okay, Let's say in your society, community, what would happen? It's good that we're not told because otherwise we would definitely have an ego problem. We would have a massive issue with our character. People have five dollars more than the rest of the community and they change like you can't believe. Subhanallah. People have a small position and they change like you cannot imagine. This is the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. He was told how many times about him being, you know, in Jannah, the first one to go to Jannah, etc., etc. So much I don't even have the time to go through that. And perhaps I don't even know all of it. But he used to read prayers at night such that his legs used to swell and his wife Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, Oh Messenger, aren't you the one who has been totally forgiven, pure, clean, going to Jannah? You're standing all night in prayer and you have this, you know, your legs have been swollen. He says, Oh, my beloved wife, shouldn't I thank Allah? Shouldn't I be a thankful slave of Allah? Look at his character. He was loved because he was humble. Even though he knew he's going to Jannah, he worked harder and harder. And the same applies to a lot of the companions. In fact, all those companions who were told, for you is Jannah, do you know what? They actually worked harder thereafter. Let's go to some of the characteristics that made him beloved. When he spoke to anyone, he spoke with respect. Even his enemies, he never swore. He was never vulgar. He never used dirty words. He never used cheap words. He was not a person who just cursed like that. He was not a person who, who, who was, you know, uh, hurtful in, the, in his mannerism, in his way. Yes, at times he did make a dua against some of the enemies. We do know that. That was a supplication for a while. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. 
If we were to use respectful language, stay away from foul language, dirty words, today it's becoming so dirty. If you look at the music industry, for example, you will find the cheapest of words are being used. And those words have filtered through our language, day-to-day -day language, speech. We talk to each other with bad words. Then we wonder why we're not loved by Allah and why people don't like us. Well, maybe you need to clean your mouth a little bit, more than just the Colgate you're using. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Really, we need to use good words, beautiful words. When people sat with him, they felt the connection. It is reported that from among those who, seated, who were seated around him, each one felt that perhaps he was the most beloved to the Prophet ﷺ. So, so imagine they were a thousand companions. Each one of them thought, I'm the most special. Wow, what a quality that is. That is divine. Obviously, that's something very high. But with us, can we not be genuine to one another? Genuine. Be transparent. Be good. Be, have a good feeling for people. Speak well with, with them or to them. And speak well about them. If there is something negative, then perhaps you want to deal with it between you and them. If there is something positive, you can tell the rest of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Another great quality he had. He was very clement. He was very forgiving. He always thought good of people. When they harmed him, he didn't harm them back. And when they harmed him, he prayed for them. How many of us? Someone harms us. That's Qiyamah, finished. For you get up for Tahajjud for the first time. Why? Not because you have a problem, but because you want to make sure you make a dua against someone who harmed you. So now your Tahajjud came into play. Allahu Akbar. It's not really that you have a problem, but you say, wait, I'll fix you. And now we're getting up for Tahajjud. Make a good dua for them. Ask Allah goodness for them. Ask Allah to open their doors. Yes, I'm not saying dive straight into an enemy's hands in such a way that they can slap you again and again. No, you keep your distance. When the ignorant address you with hate speech, with anything else that is foul and bad, you just say peace and you walk away. You don't have to deal with them. No, but you did it in a good way. You didn't do it in a dirty way. Allah says, when you stay away from them, stay away in a good way. If there are people who keep on harming you while you're praying for their goodness, you must also protect yourself. And sometimes if the harm be becomes beyond a certain level, yes, you will have to defend yourself. But with respect, may Allah grant me, myself and all of us, the ability to be respectful no matter what. Even in disagreement, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was absolutely respectful. So these qualities, these characteristics that we see of the Prophet ﷺ, surely we need to put a little bit in our lives. He went through hardship. He never complained. We complain about every little thing. We complain about luxuries. They didn't complain about necessities. Do you know what that means? What are we complaining about? We're complaining because something we want, we don't have. They did not complain when something they needed, they didn't have. Subhanallah. They went to the Prophet ﷺ. I can give you so many examples. You know them. Shia Abi Talib, when they were surrounded for a while. In Ta'if, when whatever that incident happened, he always said, Oh Allah, if you are pleased, then everything else is fine. It's okay. I'm happy. Subhanallah. He endured. He lost his children one after the other. All of them in his life. Besides one. He lost his the males in infancy and childhood, the females in adulthood, besides one who passed away just after him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did he ever say, why me? He says, oh Allah, if that's what you intended, then for you is what you gave in the first place and what you took back is also yours. So if you and I think we have problems, remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa dealt with even bigger issues, but he never complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing. Look at some more of his characteristics. When he spoke to people, he spoke with wisdom, with tact. A man came into the house of Allah and urinated in a corner. It is absurd. It is unthinkable to be honest. Unthinkable. And he dealt with him with so much calmness. I would wonder what will happen if it were to occur today on earth. May Allah forgive us.
He dealt with so much of goodness that the problem was solved. The person was convinced. He was, he turned totally. He was on the straight path once again. He understood it and he was full of love with one sentence of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, Allahumma arhamni warham Muhammadan wa la tarham ma'ana ahadan. Oh Allah, this man, I love him so much. Have mercy on, on, on him and on me and nobody else. So the Prophet ﷺ says, no, 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 no. There is an issue here. You are trying to make narrow something which is too broad, which is the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, we need to understand when the Prophet ﷺ was loved, he was loved because Allah placed within him characteristics that general people would love. Even his enemies admitted that he's a just man. You know, true virtue is that which your enemies bear witness regarding. When the enemies say, no, 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 this man is a good man. He was a just man. Look at Khalid ibn al-Walid When he came into Islam later on, he says, you know what? I knew that this man is actually assisted by Allah. And I had a feeling from the very beginning because we just couldn't overcome him. Subhanallah, I couldn't reach him. Every time there was something we planned and it was already, you know, dealt with by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So, this is the messenger, peace be upon him, great man. Yes, there is one last point that I need to make mention of. When we try to please Allah, when we try to please Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And when He loves us, He creates within the hearts of the people who are genuine, the love for us. Remember I say genuine, because even the Prophet peace be upon him had haters who hated him right up to the end. But for genuine people, they will love. They will see the sacrifice you make for the sake of Allah. They will see the genuineness. They will realize, they will notice. And it's not like you even did it for them or for them to notice. But you did it for the sake of Allah. So Allah instills within the hearts of the people the love for such for those who are trying to, to please Allah. Therefore, what we've said this evening, the most important point, over and above developing your character, being honest, not lying, speaking in the correct way, being the best to your family, that's a point I didn't even go into yet. But the most important thing is getting close to Allah. Always fulfill your duties unto Allah. Try to do your best when it comes to getting your duty is done and staying away from prohibition. Another very, very good way of elevating yourself in the eyes of Allah is to constantly seek the forgiveness of Allah. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. I seek the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, you are the greatest. I ask you to forgive me since I committed that I know. Since I committed that I don't even know. Things I did that I know, I ask you to forgive me. And certain things I don't even know I did. Sometimes we don't even realize because we are swimming in an environment that sometimes is so, so filled with little sins here and there. We don't even know what we've done. So seek the forgiveness of Allah constantly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate your status. Remember, if we want love to increase on earth, we need to be genuine towards one another. We will not be the same. We will never be the same in our thinking. Allah has created every brain differently, different capacity, different type of understanding. And Allah did it for a reason because the champion, the winner is the one who can live with all sorts of different mentalities and understandings and levels of understanding and still be fair with everyone be kind to everyone, reach out to everyone in the most beautiful way. Wherever you can do more, you do more. Wherever you cannot, the minimum is you haven't harmed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us in every way. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdihi, kanashadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiru kawla tuhu ilayhi.